they could have some ass assistance from uh, these units here which are moving now that the fog has cleared so they might come up and reinforce but really at least uh, this regiment should stay in reserve and Beans, uh, his intention is to move over here with his regiment and artillery and uh, form uh, second line of defence here so um, oh and the uh, Williams the overall federal commander is here so he's probably going to move out to be able to lend his uh, command support to uh, his three regiment commanders here ok so um, let's see what happens because uh, the, it's the federal turn continuation role they've had one uh, action already so far in this cycle and now they um, have to choose a leader uh, what yeah, so th this might be a disaster because I don't know what I'm doing and I'm just snatching a bit of time in between me having to do other things. Oh, last thing to mention is um, that this denotes that there's a disorder on the top battery of there. Okay, um, well, I suggest then that that is the job is for um, either Williams or, or Bean to make a, a roll to come and join join the uh, defence here or effectively support it from behind and uh, I think I'm going to go with Bean it's not important um, it's not you know critical so Williams will not lend one of his three command points for the roll so Bean uh, has a naught modifier he's attempting movement activation so he basically needs to roll a six or less and he rolled a seven so modified seven is a, a random event. Four. The random event is heat lull. Now, if the turn is 12:15 or later, well, in fact, if the turns are 11:30 or later, we have heat effects. If it was 12:15 or later, that would mean that the uh, the action phase is over. Effectively, that turn would be ended as everyone has to take a rest from the intense heat which they were encountering. So we roll again after a random event. Back to the Federals can decide again what they want to do. I'll continue with Bean. He rolled a three, so Bean's good to go. You can't see that action, so let me zoom out. Okay. Bean's coming across here now. There's a stream he has to forward. Um, these guys are in column, so uh, that's one, two. Three, four, five to go up, and they have one more movement point left. So they're going to go here, six onto the road. Swing around as their movement action. Okay, now the artillery has different movement point costs. What would they be? So the artillery has seven movement points now. The fox lifted, clear costs two movement points, and the stream just costs one. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and they won't be able to get up there. Okay, they're going to continue escorting them, and that's beans. Two battalions take uh, movement action, so they're now on activation two. Any more action activations, they will become fatigued, which will engender the danger of becoming exhausted and effectively losing all of next turn, um, and possibly the one after. Okay, so uh, that's two activ consecutive activations for the Federals. Um, they're going to roll again. Uh, this time. Um, Williams is going to roll to, to run forward, so that's an independent leader movement. Uh, he's got five, I believe he had some bonuses, but anyway, he's in the clear for that. So, I forget how many movement points leaders have, but um, it's ten now, and uh, on streets and so forth. It's half a movement point, so one plus one. Oh no, that's a bridge over that stream, so that's one, two, three. I think he's going to go here, which he has a command range of seven, so that puts him. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
six, seven. Okay, no, let's let's put him back there just in case. That puts him within range of all his commanders around here to be able to support them. So that was the third federal activation. Now who will go next? Um, I don't believe Cahill and his artillery are doing much there. Um, let's. Um, shall we bring this back? Nicholson might recall that. This one's up ahead. Um, let me see, let me see, let me see. Okay, Roberts, I think. No, if he goes out there, he's going to be inviting danger. Okay, Roberts is going to, to pull back so he can support the pressure on this side. So Roberts is rolling for an activation. He's on naught. It's not urgent, so he won't use any command. Um, so again, we're looking for a six or less. Four, five, six. Yes. So, uh... Roberts is going to throw these fellows. One. No, these are these are in line. One. No, let's say okay. They turn round. One, two. Tell you what. No, what Roberts is going to do is he's going to put. Oh yes, he'll do that. Okay, so here that fellow is moving back here, and this fellow, one, two, three, is moving back here. Okay, so they're still in line, and uh, they have taken a fatigue action. That's Robert's fellows. Now um, he's going to he's going to roll again to try and uh, put that one into. Um, uh, modified line so you can move it more easily and that's an 11 so that goes over to the um, confederates so the confederates get a free action okay now this is what they need he could rally this fellow but um, Okay, I think they're going to Confederates going to scratch this attach, attack, and they're going to scoot around here, and um, hopefully then they will be able to cut off these from the defence of the arsenal here. So Helm's going to make a bold attempt to cut them off. Uh, which leaves these fellows to reorganise, but it saves the confeder con confederates. They will, I guess, that the hope is they will eventually ma amass here in full strength. Doesn't it? Does not give them a very broad line of um, for manoeuvre. Essentially, because we've got the penitentiary here, that cuts off any movement between there and there. So essentially, the um, Federals would only have to defend this line. That's terrible. No, they're going to have to continue pressing here. Okay, they're going to seek to go around this battalion here. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, Helm's regiments are all within control, and he's going to. Have any of them activated yet? No. I think one's supposed to be exhausted, but never mind. Um. They're in column of companies so they can go through the streets. But only one in the streets, you can only get, have one unit in a hex at a time on the streets. So uh, that occurs in movement too. So if. So I can't move him around there through him. He doesn't want to go. Let me zoom in. So the 35th Mississippi cannot move through the 4th Alabama and along this street. He doesn't want to go up this street because that would put him in the zone of control of Keith and uh, obviously he could be fired upon. 
he could try and move through the uh, partial urban block here that's going to be slow movement he's, a, he's strength 5, he's strength of 4 so really we wanted him as the assault force but it, for maneuverability purposes the 4th Alabama are most convenient to fight down here the trouble is this is a strength 8 unit the 4th Alabama are not going to do much damage against them the Confederates have got problems and I think I'm going to have to sit a bit and decide what to do. I think, but you know, it's also, there's the pressure of, we're in the middle of combat guys, you know, we can't sit around and chat about what to do. Um, what would make sense was to bring, would be able to bring their artillery up, but it would only have line of sight down the street. Um, it, the trouble is, is this this artillery stack here is just covering up this whole area. That's a deadly um, strength of fire that battery can bring to bear. Um, how can we squeeze through here? Is it possible? That is such a strong unit. Okay. I really don't know what to do here because the Confederate units just aren't so strong. I think um, we're going to move the action. See what someone else can come up and support. So Alan is going to be moving forward and then we will see what happens, what effect that might have on the uh, federal force here. These two guys obviously wanting to circumvent that force. Um, let's see, so may may maybe Alan's um, uh, brigade here will be the deciding factor at this point of the battle. Okay, so Alan's folks are moved, they're gonna move forward. They are these are denoting they're in um column modified line. So on the road they move at one movement point. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. These ones following up. These ones have to come out of the wood, so one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Um, hang on a minute. No. He was he there? No, he was there. He's out of um command range so you can't move with them. Okay, so that was the, the um, a confederate activation. Now that's the 4th Louisiana and the 30th Louisiana. Okay. So uh, the confederate uh, Alan's going to go for another activation. Five, six, and eight plus is one, nine. That's fine. Um, second activation. Coordinated unit, Boyd's battalion, attempt activation. He's fine. So, what was that? One, two, three, four, five, 
and then another one attempt to move an application no that's gone back to the federals okay so boys battalion Taken one activation. Okay, so we're back to the Federals. Now, uh, so obviously they're going to think about responding to that manoeuvre, I guess. Um, the, if you remember, they, they, this is a victory location, the State House, because the Confederates are trying to gain control of the city uh, represented by g gaining control of that hex but without the taking control of the arsenal they do not have a, have a proper victory um, it's best for the Federals if they stay forward of I think it was this Uncle Sam Street they stay forward of it because that's another uh, sort of minor victory to the Confederates if they push them right past. So I think they they're gonna. Well, they have these units ahead of it. I guess that counts. Now it's so early in the day for it feels early in the day for the Federals to fall all the way back because then we might have basically a siege um, for the rest of the game around here. That would be interesting. And I think that would essentially invite counter-attacks from the strong federal forces. I don't think the Confederates are going to like that. So I think, I'm thinking this is not going well for the Confederates at the moment. I'm going to move back, um, attempt to move back Dudley's lone battalion here. Oh sorry, that he gets free activation doesn't he? And uh, he's in modified lines, so one, two, three, four, five, moving up along the streets. Okay, so uh, Clark will attempt to activate and uh, he can move his two regiments, all the artillery, uh, art uh, artillery is from some abandoned guns here and the supply wagon. Three, he's good to go. Okay, so we got general withdrawal on this flank. Let's see if I can zoom in there. Maybe you can see a bit better how the movement works on the streets. Okay, sorry about this annoying camera fiddling around. Okay, um, so five movement points. Don't want to get too far away from them. One, two, three, four, five. I think that's fine. Still moving along the streets, not through the urban blocks. That's four movement points, I believe. Or going into the, um, so that's a partial urban area. This is an urban block which is different rules in effect for moving into that. That's heavily congested area. Um, so where were we? The artillery, these are in column. Oh, got three sections there. One, two, three, four. Ah, they can't pass through them. Five, six, seven, Oh, how did that happen? Um, okay, so the artillery is moving fairly swiftly down there. Um, it's actually, a road and street, so they can have half movement points. So they've got seven more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so they're going to get out of the way because I don't feel they have much 
benefit in the urban combat environment. Okay, we could have them guarding some streets, but there's too many streets. No, they do need to guard streets because we might not have enough. Um, we might not have enough units otherwise. So basically, they, they had enough movement to do that. And this guy's ammo depleted. So, okay, let's move these artillery fellas. One, two, three, four, five. Um, they only have a strength of one, they can only defend, but I, I guess they would be used as speed bumps <laughs> if necessary. Okay, and these fellows. One, two, three, four, five. So, facing back there. Okay, so that's all clocks. Uh, movement action. Uh, clock's going to roll again because there's a gap here. You can't see what I was doing there. Okay, sorry, terrible camera work. This isn't working. I think I'm going to have to edit a load of this out. Clark's going to roll again because, um, no, Dudley will roll again to try and get in here because there's a gap in between the penitentiary wall and here. Don't want Alan to slip through. So, Dudley and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's within seven range of Williams, so Williams is going to lend him a point at one to his activation roll. Okay. Oh, sorry, subtract one, seeing as he's federal. He rolled a seven, goes down to six. Perfect, just what he needed. So, uh, trouble is, that battery's in the way. So he's have to, going to have to move forward there, but fortunately it's not in Alan's zone of control. One, two, And then I think he's going to try and move into that urban block. That's four points. He doesn't have enough. Okay, so he's situated there. So he's guarding these two streets. Okay. Um. Uh, now. That's Dudley's fellow, and um, Clark's going to roll for an activation again. He's too far to be aided by William. Seven random event. Eight. No, I think that's going to be no event at this point. Arkansas information, same as six. If it's 7 o'clock or later, which it is, the Confederate player has the option to use the Arkansas arrival table. If he declines, treat as no event. So you see, the Arkansas could remain as a threat, um, or it could be invited on the board and uh, hopefully assist the Confederate um, actions. I think it's going to remain as a threat at this point. So that's a no event. Back to another r roll attempt for um, Clark seven six. Okay. No, sorry, it's not. He doesn't have a minus, does he? So that's seven. Another random event roll. Nine, which is CSA goes. So basically, it's just CSA goes. And uh, then I assume we go back to federal roles on the turn continuation table. Uh, so that's nice. Alan could run the 
Yeah, could run the street there and then get massacred by all of this lot. I think we're beginning to see how it's going to pan out. Uh, okay, these fellows will have to run up. I don't think there's anything amazing that we can do. Um, okay, so one unit per street. following five now they have line no they don't have line of sight because of the urban block Wagon here and oops, Daisy. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. That's Thompson's Brigade. Ruggles gets to move free as Thompson's Brigade moves. So do the supporting supply and um, cannons. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it there for now. You've probably got enough of a picture so far of how the activations work. Now, it's a little difficult to judge what is worthy of uh, keeping on the camera and uh, what is not so exciting for a game of this sort. So at the hazard of just filming everything, I thought I'd film this. We've, uh, the, the point of uh, action at the moment is, um, is here. Uh, um, Allen's uh, brigade, uh, part of Ruggles division, Thompson's being the other brigade, was here. They had an activation and uh, he, he split his regiment to two regiments here and one regiment here covering their rear. So he's, he's, he's moved in against uh, Dudley's uh, lone battalion there, effect, trying to effect a punch through the line. Um, the choice was uh, either to go and uh, attack this um, the Clark here from the rear, so to isolate this um, regiment and destroy it. But it, this seemed like the best bet. Um, so, what's... What happened was uh, his fellows moved up here. They're considered on the street. Um, uh, all of the Confederates on the board at the moment, except for one, are in uh, modified lines. So I've I've removed the counters that I used to uh, mark that, um, so that we can see them. They're all in modified lines, so I can remember that. Um, so they can move down the streets. So these fellows are considered moving down the streets. Now, they did have the option to move into this block here, which would put them in what's called block mode. So um, the counter would be left in the block, and it would be considered adjacent to every street next to it. Um, I decided to keep them on the streets because, uh, for a start, they needed the movement. And secondly, um, I didn't see any reason to be in that block. This way, um, both the, uh, effectively, we could have had a situation like this. This one's in the block, and then this one would be in that hex on the street. So you can see it's a little bit clumsy me um, mechanically or physically, but uh, it kind of works. Um, so uh, they got the next activation and uh, promptly fired upon uh, Dudley's battalion. They managed to disorder his battalion, hence this black disc. Dudley's battalion was firing back, um, did, uh, affected a morale check against these fellows, which they both passed it. Now, um, so uh, the next question is, um, what shall they do next? Because uh, th these units are both fatigued. 
um, they could uh, assault uh, here, which or, or assault the guns here, but um, that would exhaust them, which is not such a preferable situation. Um, question. Ah, but then the question actually resolved to what do the Federals want to do, because the Confederates have had four activations in a row, so the Federals get one free. Um, I was thinking about uh, unlimbering the, the, this artillery here, but uh, in this game it would take one action to unlimber, then they would need to roll, hopefully get turn continuation, and another action to change facing. Um, Although, think about it, when they unlimber, they come out of columns, so then they have to face... Uh, no, so that... They would have to face a, a hex apex, not a hex side. So actually then he, this unit would be in range. And they can fire through these white partial blocks. You can't fire through the urban blocks. They block line of sight. Um, but... Um, anyway, changing formation in the zone of control of this unit would draw fire from it. Um, so my, I was thinking to move them back for, for Dudley to retreat, but let's say no. You, okay, let, I'm not sure because... Uh, yeah, it's the whole decision. So do we go back and create a siege? Um, ba, 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 ba. No, I think uh, Dudley's going to try and stand his ground. So this is going to attempt changing formation, draws fire from here. Now remember there, reduce strength fire. Um, so that's 714 goes down to 7. And um, minus 1 because of the buildings in the way. So we have there an 8, minus 1 column, minus 8 is no effect. Okay, so Dudley's happy. These fellows managed to unlimber their guns as Confederates are running up. They're going to unlimber it to that facing. And um, now the action goes back to the um, Confederates who have to roll for turn continuation. Uh, now, you don't really want to be, s you know what, they're going to go for an assault, it's going to exhaust them, but they're not going to want to stand there having a shooting match against the section of artillery, and these fellows being disordered, there's a better chance, so, um, I believe that will fire at them as they they're going to assault these fellows together, trying to ignore the, the guns. Okay, let's see how that turns out. So, we have the, um, oops, uh, that's a fatigue action, so those two, both LA and 39th Mississippi. Okay, I'll resolve that off camera. Okay, so, um, what happened was uh, Thompson's brigade here um, moved forward uh, against uh, Clark's uh, battalion here and um, routed it from fire. They, they came in from all three from three sides, and uh, it, um, it it had a double rout because it it was fire, it had a rout result after routing as it was moving out of the zones of control. So Clark's ran back here with his battalion there, leaving one of his battalions somewhat um, stuck out here. But it was uh, but Clark, uh, the Federals had an activation, and um, had an activation attempt. They lost it to the Confederates. So um, Thompson took a chance, and he's pushed his troops forward again. They're now exhausted. Um, but uh, as you can see, they're, they're now surrounding this battalion here, so he's going to have to fall back. So Thompson's saving uh, the, what happened here, which was that Allen's um, assault was repulsed um, without any uh, casualties, effective casualties against them. 
and uh, this little um uh, these few artilleryists here are disordered so it's um a confederate turn activation now thompson um what can go for a fire action and um, without affecting fatigue um which is what they will do so hoping to fire before this can fire at them or flee so uh, what do we get? So we've got a six and effective fires is five, six, seven, twelve. So that's six. Go down one column and six down one column. And six is no effect. Okay, so that's two Confederate activations in a row. Now, one of the anomalous things about this turn continuation system is you can see there's some stranded units back here and here and here. Now, this one's independent anyway, but these ones were were part of Thompson's uh, uh, detachment. And Th Boyd's battalion here belongs to Allen's brigade. But um, because they're out of range of the commanders, they don't move with them. They have to move uncoordinated. But... You can see that when you're you're trying to press um, an event that's happening there, these fellows get left behind. So w their hope is to be activated. Maybe when when the Confederate sort of active um, fellows have run out of movement actions that they can take, then you'd hope to tidy up the end of the turn by moving these fellows up. However, the turn can end unsuspectingly, and uh, leave leave units like that stranded. Okay, so uh, that was, I think that was, so that was a fire action, the third Confederate, that was no effect. Um, but he gets to return fire, it's facing that direction, so he's got four points, shifts down one. Um, eleven on no effect. Okay, and uh, Thompson... Now let's see, what can we do? Um, don't want to waste an activation when we could, because things are sort of hotting up. Uh, I think what we're going to do is Helm's not going to hang around. He's going to say, guys, go forward, pressure them. You, you never know, we may dislodge them. So Helm's going to go for an activation. Sorry, the action's down here. So Helm's rolling for activation. That's seven plus one is eight. Okay, so he says throw these fellows forward. One. Oh, sorry, he's there. One, two. So they're they're moving down this road. They are considered on the road, not in the block. One, two. Uh, okay, these guys are going to have to go in the block. One. Now, to move into an urban block, it takes. Okay, it takes movement points to enter an urban block. But it's specifically um, four. So he can do that. He's going to move into that um, block five. Um, and it takes a formation change, to, interestingly enough, to move out. So he's in block mode. We'll put that there to remind us. He's in block mode too. going to be exposed to artillery fire but then I think so was he anyway okay and now he's not going to do 
Well, he might as well because he's exposed here anyway. Because uh, there's no line of sight blocked there. Then Breckenridge and his supply are going to move with him. Uh, and this artillery is going to. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's going to move down there to. Uh, he's going to say, go and, go and help Alan. I think he needs you more. Okay. And. One, two, Keeping one here, and then this one, two, three, four. Ah, he's stronger. He maybe he should have gone up. Hmm. Okay, he's in that road. Okay. So that's four Confederate activations. We go to a federal activation. So obviously. He's going to order his men to fire. Okay, so, um, or we could have this artillery, but these guys need it most. So, seven goes one, two, three and a half, so we call that three. Shift down one because of terrain, and one because of the, yes of the um, sun glare because they're not in the urban four that's a could be a disorder but we're all roll of one he's, he's fine ah, I, sh I should have split my fire against those two I could have split my fire I didn't have to okay and this one he's in the block it's going to be range of two. Oh, I've been forgetting point blank range would have been double fire fire. Okay, so that would have been. Well, I'll check anyway. So he survived that. Um. So he's on four firepower. Against this one, I think, in the street, just against that one. Nine. No effect. Okay. Um, so back to the Confederate activations. Uh, Helm orders them to fire. Six, seven, eight. Okay, successful activation. So what do we have? We have these fellows firing there, point blank. So that's ten plus. Um, what have they got? Four, which has half, which has twelve. Uh, twelve minus three. Is there in an urban box of three ships? One, two, three. Okay. Big difference. That's five. What's called disorder? Four for a well check? No. Ah, so. Oh, it's going to be difficult to dislodge those fellows. Okay, um, let me check some things. Okay, I was trying to ascertain if uh, units can move along the street past the unit in the block because uh, normally, of course, you can't move into a hex where an enemy unit is situated, but um, because uh, they're situated in the block, as far as I can understand the rules, you can move past it, but you are in their zone of control. So this is what's going to be happening, is um, Helms are asking his fellows to move again. So an activation roll, 5 plus 1 for Helm is 6, so that goes to the Federals, not good. 
Um, uh, now, you get minus one command range for being in a block mode. So in fact, he's not in command of his commander who only has two hex range. He's there, so that would be one, two, but it's only one. So, um, uh, the, f the free federal file will be from this fellow. Okay. And they will fire against the Mississippi again. is nothing okay um we'll try and get an uncoordinated action on this artillery here five that will be fine uh, so range of one two three Top one's disordered. Well, they're Napoleons. Um, that's four, so that's eight plus six. Fourteen. Fourteen. Um, these are building hits, minus one. Um, uh, disordered fire, another shift. And all artillery fire, another shift. So that's going to be four to four columns. Ten. That's no effect. Okay, another um, activation. So these will attempt another fire activation. Ten. Now it goes back to the Confederates. So the Confederate activation will be Helms flank movement. Okay, so these fellows will be moving down the street. They can go into that zone of control, they're moving out, they will get fire against them. And six column, seven. Now that is effective. Don't believe there's any modifiers. Such notice it's fire at their rear as they go past. Such one, two. Okay, same effect. Okay, so they take a casualty and have to have a morale roll. Which puts that to that's Helm's first casualties. And the morale roll is a five. So that I think is going to be a disruption. Minus one. Okay. But they they've gone past one, two, three. They don't have enough movement points to go in a block now. So they're going to take up position here. Right. Okay. They are disordered. Um, they're in the block. They'll come out. I know that's a formation change movement. They can't. These ones can come out. One, two, three, four. They get fired up. Helms with them. Eight. Same effect, and pass the morale check there. Okay, so Helm's taking some casualties. Let's hope it's worth it. So his brigades now no longer stand effective, which is a kind of gives a morale bonus. And taking some casualties, some 
they have no combat effective as it's called. Um, so where were they? They were there. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Oh, and I have to roll for Helm's possible casualty. This is going to be a crucial roll for Helm. I was like to send the best lid on. Five. And that is. Um, fire, small arms, fire. He's wounded. Oh no. Um, he's been wounded. I'll have to check what that means. I don't know. Apparently. Um, I'm going to have to stop the game as well now because uh, I've got to go and do stuff. So I'll put that there to remind me. He is wounded. Can you see that? No. <laughs> That's Helm's wounded fellow there. Um, okay, that will push up there. Brackenridge is staying here. These guys are Helms, aren't they? So, okay. uh, no. so before he pushes up, these guys are coming round. So they'll take fire as they leave. Um, three columns. Okay, I'll finish this off in quick measure. Okay, so um, to continue the replay, um, it's a Confederate activation attempt. Helm wants to rally his units, so he's a rally attempt. His um, subject to command. Um, Commander's rating, um, vision for the, okay, so rating plus one, and that's about it. Four pencil eight, good. So, um, he was automatically out. Ah. He's got two. No, what I'm going to say is that was a movement action for him. He was there. Um, yeah, another activation. Now he wants to rally because. Uh, okay, four, five, six, seven. No, that's a random event. So the random event is eight. Arkansas information. If it's seven o'clock or later, the Confederate player has the option to use the Arkansas arrival tape. If he declines, treat as no event. So we can see if the Arkansas arrives. Uh, I think the Confederates are going to think now that they want to know that the Arkansas is supporting them as they're coming up here. Um, it's going to be important. So, let's see. Uh, Arkansas arrival table. Just two dice, six roll. That's a seven. Six to eight. Arkansas will not arrive. It has been scuffled and sunk. Breckenridge's initiative rating becomes naught, and his command range and points are reduced by one permanently. Ah, no, if I'd known that was an option, we wouldn't have decided to do that. So I'm going to say no, he's not going to, we're not going to go for that now, because it's not critical. So we'll treat that as a no event. Um, we don't want Breckenridge. 
we want you to lose heart at this point. We don't want the risk of it. So um, that's an event. Uh, Helm rolls again. That's it is rally. Okay, that's rally today. Rally was wacky. This costs him his rally point. The return. Okay. So now Helm's going to go for a fire action. Um, let me move this in a bit closer so you can see what's going on. It's not great, is it? I thought it was good today, so I thought I'd give this a go. Anyway, so Helm's here. His two guys here are flanking and um, coming at the rear of Robert's brigade here. Um, so they're going for a fire action, which is a plus one for Helm's activation rating. That's it. They've got it. So... Now they're in the red line, so about half firepower. Um, at point blank range, so the firepower is 2. So it's eight, 13 points of firepower. Roberts is in normal line, so um, he's not. There's no building cover. So he's in the open. Oh dear, this could, might not be good. So Roberts. Um, so green and flagged and fired at the rear. Do they go to count? I'm not sure. I think so, but the maximum is four shifts in either direction, so that's one, two, three. Density no, terrain no, sci-fi no, orbit no. That's one, two, three. So they're on the 25 to 31 column, 11. Wow, that's two strength points lost and a morale check. The morale check is six. What condition is Roberts? Regiment in. Okay, Roberts is... Um, He has his two battalions and they have taken no damage so far, so but he doesn't have stand effectiveness, so he doesn't get a bonus. They, normally everyone gets stand effectiveness, a bonus if they have no casualties at all, but Roberts doesn't and somebody else doesn't. The Parts and Rangers don't. So we're assuming that these are greener troops or, or more jittery or something like that. Okay, so um He's the 7th Vermont Battalion A, who's 2 out of their 5 straight points. But their morale stands. Hang on a minute, no, because maybe they have some modifier for being attacked from the rear. Morale check modifier. So that would be great, Commander. So we subtract one. So that would be five. Subtract add one. So that's six. Have to keep exhausted. No. And then morale is. Oh, sorry, I have rolled a one dice for morale. Let me roll that again. So I rolled over two. Two. So yes, the morale is only two, but we made it. Okay. So their first taste of action, although they're being surprised from behind, they're, they're going to take it just for them. Um, uh, we have to roll for Robert's possible leader casualty. 
So eight. I believe that's left. I find the page because uh, the small arms five, five wounded, eleven killed. So that's no effect. Now they can uh, try and return fire, but that will require facing change reaction. We have to go morale check. Ah, so we, I could leave. Oops, I could leave them as they are. Or if you try and engage them, I have to try and engage them, but they might run right. One, yeah. They, so if they did it, a morale of two. Wow, great guys. Good for you. So they change facing and return fire. Six points six. I just want to say five meters. And then fire. I think we can split split the fire. Three points each. Let's do that. So splitting fire. Okay. Seven. That's nothing. Them, and the same for them, nothing, okay. So good guys for standing there, right. So Helm wants to go for another fire action. That is a allowable repeat action. He has it. So they're not enfiladed in the yes, rear now. Seven eight. Right, this is the fifth case I've done the thirty first Mississippi. Now they've both lost strength points, so they're actually on um, four and seven. Well, that's eleven. And we've got six. Is one stroke point loss and morale check. Morale check is four, and the um, ammunition roll is three, which means we have no ammunition that goes into one of those units randomly. Those who have no ammunition before, let's have run out. Well, we can turn up somewhere. So that's three. I'm not inflated now. I've not lost more than half strength. So, um, uh, four. That's moving disorder. Okay. Yeah, disorder. You can see how it's, and, um, units, they're the the fire combat's not very bloody, they degrade quite quickly unless they're able to pull out the rally. Which I think is um, nicely illustrative of actual events. Okay, so Helms, that was we have one. Movement, rally, fire. And that was the second was that the second fire action. So that's four Confederate activations in a row. So we go automatically for one union before returning back to attempt. Um, 
what's gone wrong here is the uh, they're getting outflanked. So that they might just pull back, but if they can fight these off, then that all is well. So um, who's that? That's Beans, one of Beans fellows. Beans here. So Beans going for an activation, and Williams is going to lend him an activation point to their own range because uh, this. We need quick action here. Yeah. So they need uh, six or less, minus one. And there's no modifier. It's seven now. That's a random event of 12. The Arkansas arrives! <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad the uh, Confederates didn't choose that role that I rolled earlier. The Arkansas arrives. This, if this is not the one o'clock turn or later, and the CSA player has not used the Arkansas arrival table, which I didn't. Um, the Arkansas immediately arrives at full strength. Okay, so the Arkansas arrives. Eventually, that means we can now have um, both sides can have naval activation. So instead of a naval activation just bombarding onto the map, um, the naval activation can actually, oh look, the sun's changed, and now you've got a massive shadow on the map, you probably can't see anything. So the Arkansas arrived, it doesn't matter where they, they placed effectively, but now that um, these may be activated to attack the other ships. Um, but I'd rather like to hold that in the balance at the moment, because it, it might sink the Arkansas quite quickly if they engage in combat against all those... Union vessels. Anyway, so that's a random event. Back to. Ah, no, sorry, that I didn't need to roll for that because um. Ah, that's a shame. I'll have to take that off because that that was an automatic um, federal activation, no activation roll. Oh, how disappointing. Okay, anyway, that gives you an idea of what can happen. Um. So, uh, Bean's activating, it'll be a movement action, um, range of two, come on range, so his that fellow here's in range, these are in column, so um, they can change places, so, hmm, I'm not thinking you can't fire, so he's going to have to, see it takes a while to organise guys, this is great, I think this is just like, how it would have been. Um, okay, he's going to pop his fellow's change formation into not on movement activation. That means these are going to go into um, they will uh, look some like that. And these guys will go into line like that. These guys will get into the line, and those members will stay. I think you're not supposed to, according to the rules, not supposed to have. Yes, you're not supposed to have units facing different directions in the same hex. However, there's nothing to stop you having unlimbered artillery and um, line infantry in the same hex. In which case, one faces a hex spine, one faces a hex edge. I'm allowing a bit of interpretation of the rules there. Rather than following exact letters of the law, I think that's necessary. Um, okay, so we go back to Confederate activation attempt. Helm trying to fire. Six plus seven for his activation. That's a random event. Oh, but it's eight, not twelve anymore. Eight, the Arkansas information again. So, no, we don't want to roll for the Arkansas. We don't let that in there. Theoretical earlier roll. Um, Helm again. Five, six, seven, no, sorry, four, five. Okay, goes to the Federals. Brilliant, this is what Bean wanted. So, Bean's having a movement activation. His troops are going to take a fatigue because of that. Okay, um, one, 
and two anchors that they're moving through infantry in line moving through the building that's two moving posts so that's one two three four brilliant so that's what we want there you go and then one two three four that's what we want so the artillery can fire through the gap these folks moving up one, two, because they're moving up a level. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. Okay. Five. They have five movement points. Very full of missiles. And I'm going to say being staged there. The artillery. So all his, his units are in command. Um, Okay, is this visible? No. Okay. Looks like I'm going to have to scrap all of this. Come back to the shower. Shower just that. I'm sorry about all this, but I can only snatch moments of time when I can play and fill. So I'm trying to take the moments when I can. Um, okay, that's not brilliant, but not too tragic. Okay, so where are we? Where's the action here? Okay. So, here's Bean artillery under under him two battalions here second artillery not his artillery but he's uh, attached to him at present great so the unions have activation ownership so beans going to go for a firing activation deployed his men moving forwards unlimited some guns oh sorry these could have moved as well one True, yeah, but they are, they will require another unlimber action from him or on their own to unlimber. Bean's fire action attempt. Will Williams assist and Williams has only got one command point left to assist with. Let's say that might be necessary later. No, that goes to the Confederates. Okay. Get that reactivation, um, and then they get the attempts. So it's going to be, whew, the heat is hot for Helm. Uh, the Confederates. They, uh, they don't have the manpower to, for a battle of attrition. So the battle has to be one of like manoeuvre, surprise and capture. But the, um, the, the Union line has um, shrunk and so it's becoming tighter and firmer. Uh, the Confederates may be able to punch through, but then they, they could easily have units cut off without being able to sort of Look, I think the Federals could hold back the rest of the Confederates on the perimeter and cut off any who tried to sort of uh, try to break through and outflank. Um, it's feel like classic tactical dilemma. Um, so I think. And, and we don't, we need the reserve, the Confederates need reserves at this point, but as you can see, all their units are on the perimeter, and there's some reserves we might be put back here, let's call them up. So, that's what we'll do, this is the uh, Confederate reactivation void, who is, can you see that, I think I'm off camera anyway, he's coming up, one, two, one, two, three, four, he's 
um, Um, next is a better activation attempt. Um, what do we have? What can you see on camera? I'm going to come out a bit. Oops. Going in. So, uh, we just moved up in, um, modified line there. Um, so we got, we got Kentucky here, ensconced in the block. We've got this daring manoeuvre, this is a federal unit, but this daring manoeuvre by Helms Brigade, blocked by Bean running up, opportunity. Smith is unsure whether to Come around here, or he really he needs to press here. And Shields is going to, he's got, he's trailing artillery, so he's, he, he's going to get some possible sort of out, out round there. Um, these units are in danger of, they need to hold the flank, so you don't want the rules warming back around there. It feels just like we have no reserves. And we should have a situation like this. Um, I think, uh, what, how are Thompson's men faring? Uh, Thompson's men are fatigued. Um, Alan's men are fatigued as well. So any more action, any more movement or assault from these guys is going to Nothing like that. Um, the, the, so the Confederate and, and the Union fellows are fairly unactivated, at least in terms of movement. So the Confederates now are going to have to pray that on activation rolls something happens and the game turn ends. Um, or else the um, Federals are going to be gaining the initiative here in terms of being able to manoeuvre whereas the Confederates are pretty much all spent for this three quarters of an hour turn. Um, so, uh, I don't think Helm wants to stand out there in the midst of a nasty firefight. So I think he's against artillery and all of them, so I think he's going to withdraw which were well, his guys are fatigued, so they can't. Smith cannot. We need some artillery. That's the bad thing, that's the word. Okay. There's artillery here. We're not in action. Okay. Um Right, Smith is up to you. There's going to be a movement, Smith movement action. No, Smith um, formation change action. To um, deliver that artillery. Okay, Smith gets, he has no bonus. Really. So, seven, that's a random roll of eight, which I think we know is an Arkansas information. We can treat as no event. Again, over to Smith. Again, same exact same result. Smith again. Seven, eight. Would you believe it? Seven and eight, three times in a row. Smith, come on, wake up. Hands on the roll. No, it goes to the federals. Okay, so, um, and I think what we're going to have is these guys are pressed. Badly pressed, they're in danger of being overrun. But 
equally they need reserves to support them if they're going to start. They need overrunning of their artillery here. Um, I believe this artillery, yes, this artillery could fire here through this. Let me zoom up so you can see what I'm talking about. So you can see the facing is important. This artillery is facing out this way. So it could fire through these buildings, like loosely um, packed buildings at the supply. Uh, this artillery could fire through to Thompson's um, regiment here, who are on 3rd Street, but not in... What I'm trying to say is that it's these urban blocks block line of sight, um, whereas partial blocks don't. Partial blocks are the white blocks. So this artillery could fire here, and this artillery could try and change facing and fire. Or it could just fire. Okay, so Clark's going to go for a fire action with all his artillery, all, all his attached artillery. Um, yeah, what was that? Yeah, so that's... General activation. Fire activation. Okay, so what do we have there? We have the um, second Massachusetts B battery of three inch rifles, TB, I don't know what TB stands for, at one two hex range. They have six strength multiplier, so that would be 12 points. Um, Thompson's brigade is not, the regiment is not massive, it's not tiny, so there's no density adjustment. Um, where are we? 12 points minus 1. I'm not sure if the terrain affects are cumulative, so for example, if, if you fire through two, the one set of blocks and into another, if it's minus 2 shifts on the fire column, Uh, I'm just, um, let's say it's yes, because that seems to make sense. So, 12. Um, certainly the canister is going to be increasingly ineffective as it's 